Hello and welcome to Alexpo and since you still seem to be enjoying my series about what would happen if Celtic and Rangers played in England, I thought we might as well do an episode 3 and there's no better time to do it. We've just had the first Old Firm game of the season and what a game it was. Obviously I'm making this ahead of time so in all honesty I've got no idea what happened. I guess someone probably got kicked then another person got angry. Anyway, back to the simulation, so far we've looked at 7 scenes of Celtic and Rangers competing in the English Football League and if you haven't seen episodes 1 and 2, go check them out. Don't worry, I'll wait. We left things in the year 2026, with Celtic becoming the first team to survive a season in the top flight. As for Rangers, they look to be on the decline, creeping closer to the championship relegation zone and further away from the playoffs. So what we'll do is simulate another three years and see what happens at the end of each season. Can we get both Celtic and Rangers solidly competing in the top flight of English football? Let's find out. Ok so here we are in June 2026, as you can see Celtic have just came 14th in the Premier League, that was where we left things and as for Rangers, you know just for a bit of clarity, they had came 18th in the Championship managed by Niko Kovac, so what we'll do is we'll simulate a year into the future and see what 2027 brings. Ok so here we are the Premier League table for the 2026-27 season and once again Celtic have survived. That is two straight seasons they have survived in the Premier League. It looks like they're really finding their feet in the top flight. As you can see the odds on Edouard still this main man. 17 goals which makes him the second top scorer in the division. Well third top scorer technically. They got 42 points so they were 10 points clear of West Brom who went down in 18th. Let's have a look at what's been going on. There is a, wow, there's a big change in management. Henrik Larsson, a Celtic legend, is back at Celtic Park. He is now the manager. Let's see what's gone on there. Has there been a, a sacking? Aye, Sergi Semak was sacked on the 14th of September. So it must have been a really bad start of the season for Celtic. Let's have a look at how they were getting on. Yeah, whoa, it was really bad. Celtic didn't win a game until Larson came in and they beat Man City 3-2. Under Larson though, things were much better. They got all the way to the FA Cup final. Oh, this is fantastic from Celtic. Henrik Larson has steadied the ship. He has turned the club around, kind of. It was an awful start of the season for Semak. It's no wonder he got the sack. I mean, he got one point. A 2-2 draw with Fulham. They were knocked out of the League Cup by Bradford, who play in the League 2. No, they're in the Championship, that's not bad. It's still bad, but still. So Semak went, Larson came in, his first win against City. He would beat Chelsea, he would beat Liverpool. Big wins against huge clubs. Who else did they beat? They beat Man City in the FA Cup. A 2 2 draw with Chelsea there. That is fantastic. In the FA Cup semi-final, it went to extra time. They beat Bristol City and set up a final date at Wembley against Manchester United. Sadly, they couldn't go the whole way and lift their first ever English trophy. It was Man United who won 4-1. So never mind there for Celtic. Let's have a look at the transfers. So this season, the... Uh, 60 million came in, they spent 62 million, so they're still balancing the books here. That, that's pretty good to be honest. They brought in Daniel Azani from Watford. He was previously on loan, wasn't he, at Celtic? Yeah, he was. He was he was pretty good. He's crap now, but he was good the first time. As for outgoings, there was two big ones. Luca Pellegrini went to Leicester for 20, just shy of potentially 25 million. And Fabio Vieira has gone to Shandong Luneng. He was pretty good for them, wasn't he? Well, he started all right. Now he's gone to China. They made a, a slight profit on him. So financially, Celtic are looking pretty good. They're not overspending. They're balancing the books. I'd like to think that's playing a big role in why Celtic are doing all right in, in the Premier League. Good to see them survive. This is this is what we wanted to see. Let's see if Rangers can join them. Let's check out the championship and see what happens. So Rangers came. Well, they haven't won the title and they haven't won the playoffs. Oh, good God. Rangers only just avoided relegation to League One. They came 21st out of 24. There were seven points clear of the drop, but but still. 
They were lucky there were three clubs much worse than them because that is horrendous from Rangers. I bet there's been a change of manager as well. They've got Darren Ferguson in charge. Sir Alex Ferguson's son. Let's see what happened. God, they've had th three managers this season. Nico Kovac was sacked on, on Halloween. Spooky. Then they brought in Rodrigo, who is some Spanish bloke. I, I, I don't know who he is, but wasn't very good, obviously. He's gone to Birmingham now. And now Darren Ferguson. In between that, Phil Jagielka had a caretaker spell. So that, that's nice for Big Phil. He's the Rangers under-18's assistant manager. So he got a big promotion. Darren Ferguson, though, won 25% of his games so far. Joined on Christmas Eve. What a crap Christmas he must have had. Let's have a look at the schedule. Ooh, some bad runs there. See here, from the 3rd of October, they drew with Reading 1-1. They didn't win another league game until the 19th of December. Rian Brewster. That's quite a good little sign for them, surely. 27-year-old Rian Brewster. Oh, no, it's not. Obviously, things aren't going quite as well for Rian Brewster. Joined Rangers for 450 grand from Sheffield United. And he only scored five goals. Like I say, they were lucky... There were teams who were worse than in the cup competitions. I mean, surprisingly, they haven't won anything. West Brom knocked them out in the second round of the League Cup. As to the FA Cup, Celtic reached the final. Whereas Rangers were knocked out by Chelsea. Although they took them to a replay, they got a 1-1 draw at Stamford Bridge. So that's pretty good. I'm going to assume there's not been any money spent. No, there has. They've still made a profit though, so that's alright. Spent £22 million, but they brought in £22.5 million. It looks as though that season in the top flight is still having a knock-on effect to Rangers because they're not capable of spending much money. But I mean, they're now playing at the bottom of the championship, so what can you expect? Daniel Bentley's gone to Blackburn. Joe Rebo's gone to Nantes for just shy of 14 million. Nathan Young Coombs has gone to West Ham. He seems like a highly rated youngster, but now playing in the Premier League, no longer a Rangers man. Could have been playing in the Premier League if they got bloody promoted. So while Celtic are solidifying themselves in the Premier League, two seasons have survived moderately comfortably, Rangers have narrowly, narrowly avoided dropping down to the third tier of English football. You can see here the reputation of the competition has gone up a lot in recent years. I'd like to think that's probably because of Celtic and Rangers being involved. I mean, let's quickly check out the Scottish Premiership, just because the... The reputation has really dropped since Celtic and Rangers left. You can see here that the Ladbrokes Premier League has fallen off a cliff in recent years. Since 2025 it has now dropped about 4 or 5 places, so that's disappointing. But there have been a change in the guard after a period of domination by Hull and Wigan who took Celtic and Rangers' place. We're now getting Scottish teams winning the title. Hearts won it in 2025, then Aberdeen in 2026. This year it was Hibs, so that's good. Good to see Scottish footballs, you know, back to Scottish teams winning it. So that's that's nice. But we'll skip one more year into the future. Let's see if Rangers can sort themselves out. As for Celtic, can they get some silverware? Let's find out. So here we are, the 10th of June 2028. It is season nine of Celtic and Rangers competing in England. Celtic in the Premier League. Have they survived? Yes, they have. Ooh, just, only just. Goal difference has kept Celtic up for a third season in a row. Hudson Edwards done well again. Seven man of the match awards. One of the players of the season. Celtic lost on the final day. 2-0 to Wolves. Uh, Leeds won 2-1. Which wasn't enough to keep them. But Celtic looked like they've been okay the whole time really. Just based on goal difference. So Celtic got 40 points. The same as Sheffield United and Leeds. But they've managed to stay up with a minus 13 goal difference. I'm going to assume Henrik Larsson's still in charge. He is. Super Henrik, the super Swede. Still calling the shots, still getting the job done. You like to think there's no pressure on him. You know, he's a, he's a legend at the club. They've got to treat him with respect. Has there been any cup glory? No, not this season. They were knocked out of the fifth round of the FA Cup by Norwich. In the League Cup, they were knocked out early by Fulham. 
But again, it looks like they got off to a really slow start. Their first win came against Wolves on the 11th of September. So they didn't win any of their first four games. This run was big for them there. They'd be Bournemouth, Leeds and Newcastle in the run-up to Christmas. Have they beaten any of the big boys this season? Uh, beaten Man United at home 3-2. And Odson Edward Brace. Uh, any other standout results? I can't see any. They had a really rough end of the season, so it's no wonder they nearly went down. In the end, it's this win against Southampton that looks like it's kept them up. That was on the 19th of March. They didn't win another game. They had a re That's a really tough end of the season. Chelsea, Man United, Leicester, Sheffield United, Tottenham, Arsenal and then Wolves. Celtic have survived by their skin of the teeth. Let's have a look at the transfer, see what's happened. The first season in a while, they've massively spent more than they brought in. They only brought in just shy of £9 million. And that was all from Christian Minea, who went to CSK in Moscow. But they spent £48 million on players. The big signing was Julien Timber from Brighton. Is he real? Is he not? He's real. He's a Dutch right back who's done okay. Uh, so £24.5 million on him. No other real standouts I can see there. Let's have a look at the squad. Yeah, once again, it's Odson Edward just leading the way. He's the absolute talisman at the club. Freddie Woodman's played once and done all right. Still Luke O'Connell still there. I'm going to assume that James Morrison isn't the West Brom James Morrison. No, he's a regen, but that's fine. Come through the academy, looks to have done okay in his few appearances. But Odson Edward, let's have a look at him. 13 goals this season, 17 the year before. A true Premier League striker now. Like I say, it's amazing Selic have still got him, but, but they have. And once again, they have survived in the top flight of English football. Henrik Larsson leading the charge. But as for Rangers, well, I pray they haven't gone down, but let's, let's have a look. Let's see what's happened in the championship. As I say, they came 21st last season. There were seven points clear of the relegation zone. Okay, so they haven't won the title. They were beaten in the playoff final. Rangers totally turned things around this season. They came fourth. Oh, and they were only one point shy of getting automatic promotion. They got 80 points, but it was West Brom who came second with 81. Rangers still navigated the playoffs. They beat Millsborough, who they were level on points with. But in the final, they were beaten 3-0 by Swansea. Disappointing, that is, at Wembley. Mm, Rangers just haven't shown up. Swansea's put in an absolutely brilliant performance there. Goals from Cole Palmer, Morgan Rogers, and Brian and Bumo. Not good enough for Rangers on the day when it mattered. Wales beating Scotland effectively. Meaning, yet again, Rangers are staying in the championship. But at least this time, that you know, they didn't nearly go down. Let's check them out, see who's calling the shots now. Darren Ferguson's still there, so that's good. They've... They haven't had to change managers once again. Arinet Murich is the goalkeeper, so that's that's interesting. He's formerly Man City. And for 425 grand, he's he's been a wonderful signing. Let's have a look at the schedule, see how they got on. Wow, what a start it was to the season for Rangers. They got off to an absolute fly. Obviously, there must have been a bit of an inquest at the club after the previous season. A very good season for Rangers, and just it just hasn't happened for them when it mattered. Uh, they got the job done against Middlesbrough in the first leg at the Riverside. Oh, sorry, the Janino Paulista Stadium. Wonderful, wonderful name. Won 3-1. Then they were beaten 1-0 at Ibrox, but they got through 3-2 on aggregate. On the final game of the season, they were beaten by Preston. So they could have they could have gone up if they'd won that game. They could have came second and set up another old firm tie next season. But alas, no. In the Cups, they were knocked out by West Brom in the fourth round of the FA Cup. As for the League Cup, they beat my Newcastle on penalties. This is disappointing for Rangers. Let's see what money's been spent. Mm, a bit more than what they brought in. But again, not a lot. You know, they are a championship club. G o'clock Salt are on a free from Hull, formerly of the Chelsea Academy. But Rangers so, so close to going up. Let's have a look at that final day. Did West Brom win? Yeah, West Brom won. And Swansea, where are Swansea? Sw uh, West Brom beat Swansea, so it was down to them. But Rangers had it in their hands. If they just won that final game against Preston, Preston, who were 
11th, not competing for anything, just mid-table obscurity for the for Preston, but a 3-1 defeat. If it had been a win, they would be a Premier League club right now, but they're not. So never mind. Let's simulate one more year. Let's go into the 10th year of this simulation. Can Celtic are a bona fide Premier League club now. Can they kick on to the next level? And can Rangers respond to this real heartbreak for them? I don't know why I sound so emotional. It's, it's just a game. Okay, so here we are. Season 10, the 9th of June, 2029. We'll go straight to the Premier League. See how Celtic did. And, oh, they've just survived. Celtic are getting worse. The points tally has decreased once again. And they are so lucky that three teams have had an even worse season. One point kept Celtic up. Oh, and that is, wow, that is drama on the final day. If you can see there, so Swansea went down on 33 points. Celtic survived on 34. Celtic and Swansea met on the final day. A win for Swansea would have kept them up. A draw was good enough for Celtic. And that's what it was, a 2-2 draw. Celtic were behind twice, but got it back. Graham Libbard with a brace. Whoever he is, let's check him out. A Dutchman on loan from Liverpool, nine goals for the club. Two essential goals to keep them in the Premier League at the expense of Swansea, who beat Rangers in the playoff final last time out. 34 points is, that is quite poor. Patrick Crotone was the top goal scorer, that's interesting. Anyway, we'll go to Celtic. Still Henrik Larsson in charge. That's good, you know. Hopefully things aren't on the decline for Henrik. You know, we'll want to keep him as manager. He has kept them up. That is that is what matters. But only, only just. Ah, oh, they were poor. It took until the 30th of September to get a win. It was a 2-0 against Brighton. But they started off with four straight defeats. The first point was against Swansea. Let's see how they did in the Cups. They were knocked out in the League Cup by Millwall on penalties. As the FA Cup, they were beaten in the fourth round by Chelsea. So they haven't been able to match that FA Cup final performance from a couple of years ago. And they ended the season slowly. That win against Bournemouth 3-0 in April was followed by defeat at Wolves, defeat at Arsenal, defeat at Man City. But on the final day, when it mattered most, they got a 2-2 draw to keep them in the Premier League. Financially, they've, they've brought in a lot more money than they spent. Well, just shy of 20 million. They brought they spent 45 and a half million quid on players. The most expensive arrival being Andrew Gravion from Arsenal, who is French. Yep, he's real as well. He could be leaving. Looks like he's going to Saudi Arabia. Never mind. He's asked to leave the club. What a waste of time. But they brought in £62 million. Pounds. So who's gone? That was big. Yamlaka. I know I'm saying that name wrong, but I, I don't know how to say it. Conor Gallagher's gone to Lille as well. I can say that. I love a look at Jan here, the striker. Over the years for Celtic, he's been... All oh, right, he's got a few key goals, but... Gone now for a £10 million pound profit, so that's nice. Financially, as we say, sell like a sound. They don't really seem in a position though to kick on. Eric Garcia, the captain, that's that's nice to see. Well done, Eric. I wonder if he still wears a little helmet. Alton Edward, the main man, despite despite what it says there. Brian Fiabem is the, the key player, apparently. Worth 40 million, right winger. Not with those stats, you're not the key man. Brian. Sorry, it's still Odson. So sell just, just, just have survived once again. Oh, that is dramatic. Let's see what Rangers have done in this final year. I mean, it doesn't have to be the final year. Like I say, if, if, if this is still popular, we can, we can just keep going and keep going. We can just run this until the wheels fall off. But this is the 10th year. Rangers, oh dear, they've... Who's Sean Parrish? He's the manager now. Darren Ferguson's gone. As you can see there, they've came 21st in the championship once again. So maybe it was just a blip when they nearly, nearly got promoted. This time, they were a lot closer to dropping down in the third tier of English football. They got 42 points to come 21st, just finishing ahead of Crystal Palace of all clubs, who got 40 points. Let's have a look at the final day. Rangers were beaten by Watford 
3-1 whilst Crystal Palace were beaten by Reading. So both teams, it could have gone either way. Rangers got lucky though, their defeat to Watford didn't matter in the end. If Crystal Palace had won that, they'd have survived and Rangers would have been a third tier club. So they've survived by this, both old firm clubs have survived by the skin of their teeth. But at least Selic are doing it in the top flight. Let's go to Rangers. As we say, Sean Parrish, now the manager. Darren Ferguson's gone. I'm going to assume he got the sack. He did. He got the sack on the 30th of September and was replaced by Nuno Espirito Santo. What a big name they got in there. I mean, how has he been doing since he left Wolves? So he got sacked at Wolves in 2019. God. Then he spent four years as Swansea manager. Got the sack there. Sacked as Rangers manager after barely any time. Now it's Sean Parrish. I'll be honest, I don't know a thing about Sean Parrish. He's kept them up. Let's have a look at the... We'll go to the transfers first. Like I said, there can't have been much more. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's a fair wedge of cash to spend to only just survive in the championship. Just shy of 30 million quid. The most expensive arrival was David Boer from Portsmouth. 8.5 million. An Italian right back who... Played five games. Uh, there's been a lot of bad decisions here at, at, uh, at Rangers. Going out, nothing really I can see there. Ramadan Sobi, remember him? He was at Stoke. And then he just f went to Egypt straight away. Couldn't handle the heat. I think I might even left midway through the season. So Rangers, they've had one season in the Premier League. Oh, that is, that is inconsistent. It's like a blue traffic light system. Doesn't go go much. In the Cups, absolutely nothing. First round they were knocked out by Leeds in the League Cup, then the FA Cup they were knocked out by Newcastle straight away. This is pretty sad for Rangers, pretty disappointing. So, I mean, can, can we draw any conclusions? I mean, I think in, in reality Rangers and Celtic would do better because they are historically massive clubs and will be able to attract big names. They've got massive stadiums and massive, massive fan bases. But, I mean, Celtic have, have solidified themselves in the Premier League. They've survived three seasons of, I three seasons in a row. Something like that. It might be four now, I'm not sure. Whereas Rangers, one minute the Nelly went down, the next they were one game away from promotion. Now they've narrowly, narrowly avoided relegation to the third tier of English football. 21st in the Sky Bear Championship. I, I like to think in reality Rangers would be doing a lot better than that, but we can only go by what the simulation tells us. There we go. Celtic doing it all. Celtic hanging on in the Premier League. Rangers hanging on in the Championship. That is 10 seasons of what would happen if Celtic and Rangers were in the English Football League. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to keep this going. I'm more than happy to do it. It's quite interesting. But we will leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo. But until next time, we will see you around.